Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Ivy's YouTube channel. My name is Ishani and I'm the lead trainer at Ivy for Advanced Excel, VBA and the data visualization tools of Power BI and Tableau. So today in this session, we are going to cover the macro recording, which is a very useful feature of Excel and helps us to reduce our task drastically. So let's begin. First thing is, what is a macro? Macro is basically a tool in Excel, which helps us to record the steps that we are doing in Excel. And why it is important to record these steps? So think about a scenario where you are doing the same process in Excel over and over again. A very simple example, when you download the data from any of your servers and you're cleaning the data or adding some new columns with some calculations on top of it, this work is done every day before you can start your analysis. So rather than doing this work again and again, every day and following all the steps manually, what we can do is record a macro. And once the macro is recorded, we can call the macro and repeat the process. So like you can see in the screen, the macro tool is kept under the ribbon of view. Under that, you will see macros, and then we can view the macros we have recorded. We can record the new macros, and there is something called relative reference, which we will be talking about. Now, what are the advantages that we get of recording a macro? It definitely saves a lot of time. Any process that I would have done while recording a macro, and let's say I took about five minutes to record it or 10 minutes to record it, when it's running, since it's run through the code in the back end, it happens in a few seconds or it might take a minute or so, but the kind of time saving we are talking about is a huge. Secondly, since human is not involved, there's no human intervention in the process of working in Excel, therefore, there is a reduction in the human errors or reduction in the errors while executing the process again and again. And number three, what most of the companies worry about, I have taught this process to one person. Now he is leaving the company. Again, I need a resource to whom I have to show this process, make sure the process is done correctly, and then I can get my work done. My work gets stuck if someone leaves the organization. So again, if we have created an automation using a macro in Excel, we can automate our most important reports and we are not dependent on the user anymore. Whether it's a person A or a person B tomorrow, by the click of a button, by using a shortcut key, we can, we can repeat the process. Now, before we get into the macro recording, it is very important to understand that there are recording of two types. One is absolute and one is relative. I'll give you an example through the recording, but just to go through quickly, what are the distinct differences between both of them? So absolute recording is basically by default, the recording type that is there in Excel. And if I don't want to do it absolute, I have to actually go and click on relative recording. So if you remember this screenshot over here, when you click on macros, at the very bottom, we get used relative reference. So once I click on this part over here, this is the place where I can convert the absolute recording into relative recording. So one is default, one I have to pick. Second, what is the purpose of a absolute recording and what does an absolute recording mean? So just like how we put dollar signs on our cell references, and when we're copy pasting these cell references with dollar sign on row and column, we don't see them changing at all. So whether I paste it in a row below or I paste it in the column adjacent to it, the cell reference remains constant. Same concept is with the absolute recording. So the process that I've executed on a set of cells 
it will be executed on the same set of cells again and again when you run the macro. So the area on which the process is repeating, that remains constant. However, a lot of time people feel that what is the purpose of it if I were to repeat the process on the same sheet, because obviously that's not required. When I say it is repeated on the same set of cells, it doesn't mean on the same sheet. It could be a sheet of any workbook that you have, but the process would be run on the same set of cells. So if I was running an action from A1 to A10, if I go to another workbook, sheet two, the action will still run on A1 to A10. So what's the use case of it? Typically, if you think about reports, any report that we create, whether it's a daily report or a weekly report, quarterly report or a monthly report, pretty much the structure remains the same. The only thing that changes from one report to another report is the value that is there. So since the structure remains the same, absolute recording has a best use over there. Then we might think, why are we using relative recording? Sometimes we need to perform a process or a set of actions from the active cell in Excel. So it may not be a predefined set of cells on which the repetition has to happen. It can be from any cell that I select, but the process executed has to be the same. A simple example, when you're transposing the data. Now, it's not necessary that all the data I have in my sheet has to be transposed to one common row. I don't want to overwrite my values, but I want to repeat the process of transforming. However, the transformation, the transposing of the data should take in one row and then the next row, then the next row. So in this case, we want to repeat the process, but based on active cell position, and hence we would use relative recording. So like I said, the use case of it would be if I'm recording a process and I'm running the process on the same sheet, then definitely it is a work of relative recording macros. Now let's jump to a quick example over here. Over here, I've got a small table which has the cheese type, the number of people in front of it, and this is a table. Now what I would want to do is repeat whatever formatting I'm doing or calculations I'm putting in this particular report on another report, which I might get tomorrow. So how would we do that? So I'm just going to copy this sheet quickly. And I'm going to record my macro on this particular sheet. So let's begin. I'm going to select A3, go to view, go to macros, and I'm going to record it as absolute macros. So like discussed, it is by default. So I don't have to record it. I don't have to change the recording type. I'll simply go to record macros. Now, once you're recording the macros, very important thing is give a proper name to your macros. Without names, you will not be able to recall which code you had put in which macro, which makes it very difficult to reuse it. So I'm going to name it as cheese table format, give a shortcut. The reason we are giving a shortcut is that we want to run this process faster and again and again easily. Hence, we give a shortcut. Try to avoid any shortcuts that you are using on a daily, on a daily usage. So I am going to use control shift Q. And if you want to put a description to what this macro does, then you can write it in this, this box. Once we click on OK. Now, whatever we are doing, anything that we are processing will be recorded. So first and foremost thing I'm going to do is get rid of this row over here, delete, create a new column called percentage people. And I'm going to calculate my percentage as this B4 divided by sum of this entire column, which is already named as people numbers. 
And once I press enter, I get the first value. I'm going to go and convert it, the format as a percentage, copy paste. And now we'll do a little bit of formatting. So I'm going to select the table. Let's say put some borders around it. I want to change the font style and the font color. So I'm going to make it blue background, font color as white, make it bold. I want to center align these two values. So going to home, center alignment, and the header, I want to merge the cells, increase the size of the font, change the background color and the font color, and I think we're good to go. So once all the process that is required is done, we need to stop recording. So either you can go back to view, macro, and stop recording, or there's a stop button right next to ready at the bottom of over here. So I'm going to go and do stop recording. All the steps that we recorded now can be reused on this sheet of cheese, selecting A3. Shortcut key was Control Shift Q, and my work is done. So this was a short demonstration to understand that why macros are important, what are macros, and one small example to illustrate the same. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned, subscribe to YouTube channel of IV Professional School to get more videos like this. Thank you.